coming through When the growth look good on you Best believe they wanna screw now I've been trying to climb Devil threw me in the dark Baby, don't be insecure You can still go make a mark like Blow. Could never let them drain my soul now Blow. Table turning like doorknobs Wow Blow. I think I'm about to set sail I'm a walking living legend Walking with my chest yeah. now Life keeps dealing me cards I keep Yes, 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 guys, we are back in the build. Tim, going to be doing quite a lot of these um, scout watches, player watches and stuff like that. You guys already know. I love, you know, going out there and just just checking out players, man. There's so many players in the world of football. So, you know, I'm here to just kind of try and dissect as best as I possibly can, articulate it to you guys as best as I possibly can. If you guys like what I'm saying, if you like the videos, if you like these kind of videos as well, please make sure you smash a like on these videos. And if you haven't subscribed already, please make sure you do so. If you don't really like it, smash a like anyway. And let me know in the comments, man. Let me know in the comments, whatever it is, I can potentially change it up. Or <clears throat> if there's a player, guys, if you recommend a player that you think would be fantastic for this team, or if there's just a player out there that you think Liverpool, you know, should be looking at, kind of thing let me know in the comments man let me know in the comments and we will dissect that player but as you guys can see on your screens right now is Alexis McAllister uh the Brighton midfielder um obviously he's been making hella noise this season obviously won the World Cup with Argentina so why wouldn't he and he is obviously a player that has been linked with Liverpool Football Club and 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 Manchester United. As Fabrizio Ramona has obviously put out here for you guys, Liverpool and Manchester United remain keen on signing Alexis McAllister as talks will take place very, very soon, not going to be late in the window. Now, we all know Liverpool Football Club like to do their business nice and early, if they possibly can. We saw it with the Canate deal. We saw it with the Fabinho deal previously before. We saw it with the Keita deal previously before that. We saw it with the Diogo Jota deal when we signed Thiago. And the next day we got Diogo Jota. So Liverpool do. And we saw it with Cody Gakpo, obviously, this season in January. So when it does come to sign-ins, that's one thing I will say Liverpool are pretty good at is when they've kind of targeted the players that they really, really want to sign and they've got everything kind of sorted, they do, you know, get things kind of popping as quickly as possible. But that's if they're able to do that. Will they be able to do that with someone like a McAllister? I don't really know. Now, why do Liverpool want to sign a McAllister? No, he is a he's played in various various positions um, this season. Especially to take this banner off. Um, he's played in central midfield, defensive midfield. He's actually played defensive midfield more times than anywhere else this season, which is actually the most intriguing thing about this. Now, that just might be the way that you know Brighton set themselves up. But he's played in central midfield five times, attacking midfield nine times, and defensive midfield 15 times. And uh, from defensive midfield, he scored five goals, which is crazy, and got himself an assist. Uh, attacking midfield, he's only scored three times and got himself a goal. Now, does that mean that if Liverpool sign him, and <clears throat> I keep mentioning this, I keep saying this, I keep asking everybody this, do you think the players that we will sign, especially with the way that Liverpool are at this current moment in time, and especially with the way that Jurgen Klopp is uh, in general, do you think that Liverpool are going to go out and when they sign some of these players, are they signing them for what they can do? Or, or do you think that Klopp is signing these players for what he thinks they will do in his team? Because the two are different. They're not going to be the same thing. Do you know what I mean? As we have seen with previous players. Um, case in point, Cody Gatpo, Darwin Nunes. Curtis Jones, Harvey Elliott, Thiago. That's a lot of players that he's kind of brought into the team, either signed or in Curtis Jones' situation, obviously brought up from the youth team. That's a lot of players that he's brought into the team and don't really do what they used to do, but he wants them to do what they, what he wants them to do, obviously, in, in this team kind of thing. Whether that works for the team or not, I don't know. You guys be the judge of that. You guys obviously be the judge of that. Now, a lot of people are obviously gassed and they're like, oh my goodness, we've got to sign McAllister and blah, blah, blah. And I can kind of see why. I can kind of see why. This is, <coughs> excuse me, this is obviously Brighton's formation. They, now, Brighton, they, they're pretty good because they use different different types of formations, obviously, this season. But one of them, obviously, is the 4-4-2. In the 4-4-2, McAllister is obviously playing in central midfield position. 
um, as you guys can see here in the 4-2-3-1, he's playing again in the central midfield. So he's playing as one of the two who's kind of helping to shield against, um, you know, shield uh, the defence. But I'd probably say that's probably more Pascal Gross's, Pascal Gross's job more than anything. But he is obviously in that position. But sometimes he will also play in that attacking midfield position. Now, I put up here, this is kind of, obviously, if he were to join Liverpool, the kind of positions he could potentially take up. Now, this is obviously with Trent's whole new new thing, you know, new position and that, that he's taken up. You know, you could potentially have a midfield three of Trent Alexander-Arnold, Thiago and um, Alexis McAllister, potentially. Or if you're looking, obviously, more conventional for what we've been doing, you could have, obviously, again, I've just put Fabinho there for the sake of it, but, you know, Trent Fabinho... Gapo and McAllister potentially in those kind of positions behind the striker. Who really knows? Um, again, guys in the comments, let me know. Where do you think if Liverpool were to even sign a McAllister, where do you think he would even actually go? You know, what kind of position would he realistically play? This is his heat map for this season. Again, most of it is in those attacking midfield areas. Now, is Alexis McAllister a midfielder that we've been... We, we, obviously, I'm not saying we haven't been monitoring because I think everyone would have been monitoring him this season, especially. I mean, from probably from the back end of last season, but, you know, more, more so this season because of his performances, one, in the World Cup, but his performances for Brighton have actually been really, really good. And I think that when we're looking at, again, Liverpool in this kind of new formation and stuff like that, is that a position that you would prefer to see Alexis McAllister? Let me take that back, actually. <clears throat> Let me not even say prefer, because everyone would prefer to see him there over Jordan Henderson. I think that's a bit unfair. Is it, it? Does he fit that role? Is he a player who can play in that kind of position and, you know, do pretty well? This is what he's like against attacking midfielders uh, slash wingers um, this season. Um, in terms of um, where he ranks, you know, he's in the 90... Um, the 91 percentile for passes attempted, um, passes completion 97, progressive passes 84, um, successful take ons not really, you know, not really doing well there. Touches in attacking penalty area mm, again, not really, you know, doing that well there. Tackles pretty good, interceptions pretty good, um, shots total pretty good, okay, kind of thing. You know, he, he looks okay when you compare him to this is again being compared to other players in his position in that kind of role. Again, this is to all the other midfielders in a general sense. And um, you can see where he's kind of ranked, you know, when we're looking at that, again, passes attempted. Now that drops down to 59%. And once that starts to drop down to 59%, now you're starting to think, mm, okay, fair enough. Mm. But again, these ain't, <clears throat> when we're looking at some of these stats and statistics and things like that, again, it's not bad. It could be better. And for the money being quoted, probably should be better. Um, but again, it's all about the style of play. It's all about where you guys think someone like a McAllister would be able to, you know, fit in to this Liverpool team. Now, again, I think what's happened is that we're so used to seeing James Milner, you know, Jordan Henderson and players like that continuously play. And we're not obviously happy with the fact that these players are obviously playing. Um, and we want new players to play there. So, you know, you're, you're anyone new, effectively, which I totally understand. But I always look at the situation and think to myself, is this a really a player? For me, he's a good option. Whether it's the, you know, the right player, I don't really know. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't really know whether it's the right option. Again, it's a lot of money that's being potent, uh, potentially touted for someone like a McAllister. I think it's upwards of like 60 million. You know, you're going to spend 60 million on McAllister. Again, I'm I'm not 100% sold on the idea, if I'm being totally honest with you. Um, I think some people get it twisted with the sheer fact that anything is an upgrade. Just because anything is an upgrade, it doesn't then mean that you just because you're walking around with an, I don't know, with an iPhone 10 that you just must get the iPhone 11 just because it's the upgrade. At the end of the day, I mean, if you can potentially get the newest one, then get the newest one. If not, then obviously, of course, then you're going to have to start making, you know, some, you know, you're going to have to start looking at some type of alternatives. And I totally understand that. And again, 
when I mean alternatives, I don't mean splashing out 60 million on potentially an Alexis and McAllister. I think Liverpool have to be really, really smart in the summer. I'm not saying he's a bad player, by the way. I think he's a really, really good player. And I think he really does fit into that Brighton system that they play. But again, big fish, small pond kind of syndrome, I think, with some of these players. I think we've also got to remember that Brighton are not this all-conquering team. They're playing very, 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 very well this season. Cannot deny that. Cannot go, cannot go against that. But their objectives, their pressure that they have in comparison to a Liverpool, a Chelsea, uh, whatever kind of thing this season is, is not even close. It's not even close. You know, we're going for the big honours. They're just hoping that they do well in this season. You know, they're, they're, that kind of pressure is totally different. And when you have that kind of potential freedom, again, not saying that these are bad players, but we need to have that potential freedom to be able to just kind of go out there. We've seen it with quite a lot of these teams. None of these teams really, <clears throat> you know, stay the course, so to speak. Southampton, a few years back, amazing. Everyone's like, oh, we've got to be like Southampton. They're producing players. They're playing really good football. Look at them now. Look at them now. Bournemouth, same thing. Um, you know, we, we've seen it with so many. Diff- there's so many other teams who have just come up and, you know, we thought they were going to be the team to kind of break that. Wolves, Jesus Christ, Wolves were in Europe at one stage. You know, doing well in Europe. Look at them now. You know, <clears throat> these teams have never really realistically stayed the course. Obviously, m- more or less just because of the funds that they can and can't spend and stuff like that. But when I look at some of their players and stuff like this, I'm like, hmm, yeah, he looks like a good player in that system. But Jurgen Klopp doesn't play football like a Deserby. Deserby plays really good football. Jurgen Klopp's football is quite different. <laughs> you know what I mean? Whether you think it's good or not, whatever, it's just different. You know, I prefer the Zerbi's football. So if Jurgen Klopp was going to adopt that style of football, I would then say, yeah, of course, you know, we should definitely get in an Alexis McAllister. You know, he'll come in, he'll do this, he'll do that, blah, blah, blah. 30 games a season, 10 goals, two assists. You know, <clears throat> that's pretty decent. That is, that is pretty, pretty decent. But then I'm thinking, sitting there thinking to myself, mm, but the reality is Klopp doesn't really play that way. So if Klopp doesn't really play that way. How are we then going to get the same kind of level of output from this player? Because we play a complete, not completely different, but we, we do play a different style of football. You know, <clears throat> Brian are all about nice possession, penetrating football. We're all about the slow, slow kind of build up. But then we we have intensity when we defend. You know, it's, it's kind of all over the gap. You know, we heard what Pep Guardiola said about the Serbi in terms of the build up play. We do not build up nowhere near as good as Brian. I can tell you that for a fact. You know, having watched Brighton this season anyway, <clears throat> I don't personally feel that we build up as good as them. So that might be a determining factor when we're looking at certain players. Hence the reason why certain players will be able to shine in certain teams. Again, I want people to just understand and remember what I'm trying to say. I'm not saying Caicedo isn't good. I'm not saying, you know, Matoma isn't good or McAllister isn't good. I was a solid march, Pascal Gross. I'm not saying none of these players are not good. I think they are really, really good players. And I'm not saying that they couldn't come into the team and work, but I think they can only really work kind of under the same conditions that they were working with before. And if the t- if there is going to be a little bit of a tweak, I don't think the tweak can be so major that when you bring these players in, they're just going to boom, 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 boom. Again, I would love to be wrong. If Liverpool go out and sign Alexis McAllister, I do like the player. So, you know, he definitely would be a player that I'm going to look at and think, OK, I want this guy to really do well. I really, really want this guy to do well because he's a player, as, as I said, that I like. Will he do well? That's where my worry is. With Liverpool's recent signings, <clears throat> what we're seeing, Darwin Nunes, striker, turned left winger. Gakpo, left winger, turned striker. Um, Thiago, d- deep line playmaker, turned runner mid- in midfield. J- Curtis Jones, left winger, attacking midfielder. Turn central midfielder, Harvey Elliott, right winger, turn central midfielder, turn God knows what now. You, you, you know, it, it's, it's, it's too much. And hence the reason why I say that Liverpool need to be smart in the summer is I'm just hoping that Jurgen Klopp, if he's looking at these kind of players, that's great. Not hard, but that's great. Yeah, you, you've, you've seen there's a good player out there who's playing for Brighton. <clears throat> I always think when you look at certain players playing for certain teams and they're flourishing, the only reason why I would pick them up is because we play that similar style of football. If we play the similar style of football to Brighton, let's go to Brighton straight away. Let's have a look at some of their players. Let's take some of their players. 
kind of thing if we if we possibly can because then you're just translating playing for Brighton to then playing for Liverpool. So in theory, it should then work or it should be a match made in heaven, so to speak, you know, a, a better match made in heaven than it would be any other club. But because we don't play like Brighton, that's where my issue kind of lies. And that's where, when I look at someone like a McAllister, that's why I'm a little bit like, <clears throat> I do, I would want him at Liverpool, but I just don't know if we've got the role for him there. And again, people are going to be like, no, gee, he can do this number this number 10 row and stuff like that if and, and again we I, I want people to forget that you're comparing him to jordan henderson forget jordan henderson's even there just think of the role in itself think about the way that Jurgen Klopp wants to play his football think about the way that Jurgen Klopp plays his football will this player be able to fit into that level of intensity will he be able to understand that there's going to be more running than football and that you're not going to be one of the main players in the team because we've got trent alexander arnold there because we've got Mo Salah there. You know, all of these kind of factors come into play, hence the reason why I'm asking the question, you know, do you guys think that, you know, that someone like an Alexis McAllister would be a good signing? You know, I see a lot of people, and, and it's funny because I was actually coming here to do one of those myself until I kind of stopped and thought about it. A lot of people you probably see in social media, <clears throat> YouTube and stuff like that, you know, they be talking about McAllister and, what he does and what he offers to Brighton. The problem is, no, none of them that I've seen anyway have spoken about how that can be implemented for Liverpool because Liverpool and Brighton play completely different styles of football. It's not similar, it's not the same. So where we're not the same in what we do, how do you then expect a player to come in from that to this? Do you, do you get what I mean? And I think that's where my worry kind of lies when... I see that we're linked to these kind of players. Whether Klopp wants them or not, I don't actually know. But we don't actually know <clears throat> in, in that kind of sense. Well, I said we don't know. Klopp obviously likes him. Whether that's a player that we would actually go out for, I don't really know kind of thing. Again, we're linked with so many different types of midfielders. The Kefran Turam, the McAllisters, the Mason Mounts, the Conor Gallagher's, the Drew Bellingham's, Moises Caicedo's. You know, at one point it was Amrabat, Paulinia. Um, Jesus Christ, there's been so many different types of midfielders that we've been linked to, you know, Chiromani beforehand, Camavinga before that, you know, th these are all Ruben Neves, Mateus Nunes, they're all so different in what they kind of do. I'm just trying to wonder where the hell do these guys kind of fit into the team? That's all I want to know. How do they kind of fit into the team? Again, I know the majority of the fan base, this is all you're seeing. You're seeing this because you see Henderson there in that McAllister position, but then you're forgetting the actual role in itself. You're forgetting the defensive side of the work because Henderson isn't actually doing it. But remembering that there actually needs to be someone to be able to do that defensive side of things. Can McAllister do that? Who knows? Who knows? I, I don't actually know. <clears throat> That's actually one thing I, I don't actually know. I'm just more asking the question it, it kind of thing. Will he be able to kind of do that role? kind of thing. And as I said, he's not going to be one of the main players in the team. He's going to be far from that, to be honest with you. He's going to be way down that pecking order because he's, he's a big fish in a small pond at the moment in time. But now he's going to be a big fish in an even bigger pond. So now it's going to be you know a case of, well, small fish, really big pond, to be honest with you. So will he be able to kind of live up to that? Will he be able to deal with that? I don't really know. But again, I'm just finding it totally interesting, the type of midfielders that Liverpool have obviously been linked to. Uh, McAllister, very, very good player. Very, very good player. I think he works in certain teams because of the way that they play and because of the way that he plays. So, for example, Arsenal are a team that I think would suit quite a lot of these players that Liverpool have been linked with because a lot of the players that Liverpool have been linked with are not really players that I would say are Klopp players. And I don't think Klopp will be able to work with them purely because <clears throat> they're players who are very good at football. And that sounds weird, but we don't possess many of those kind of players, in my personal opinion, who are really good at the footballing side of things. They're good at the physical attribute side of things. And if you look at Liverpool's team, you'll kind of see if that's actually true. Physical attributes, we're really, really good at fast, strong, you know, um, acceleration, all of these kind of things, running, you know, bleep test, all, all of that shit. We seem to be really, really good at and we'll get the players to fit that kind of mould because of the intensity level that Jurgen Klopp wants to play. But if we're just talking football, your teams like your Arsenal, your Manchester, hence why 
Gundogan leaving and McAllister coming in, to me, makes perfect sense. That, for me, is a match made in heaven. Coming to Liverpool, I don't feel like it's a match made in heaven. I feel like it's going to need work. If it can work, fantastic. As I said, I like McAllister. But is it going to be too much work? It's a lot of money that we're going to have to spend. Will we then still have enough money to go out and really do what we need to do in the market? Liverpool need to be smart this summer. Liverpool really, really do need to be, you know, smart this summer. So, you know, let's let's wait and see. But guys, let me know in the comments, what do you think in terms of Alexis McAllister? <clears throat> um, have you guys really watched him? Do you think that he can implement exactly what he's doing for Brighton for Liverpool? Um, do you think Brighton and Liverpool play the same style kind of thing? You know, all of these kind of questions. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. If so, as well, if you do think that as well, let me know how much is too much. How much are you willing to pay for Alexis McAllister? Do you think that, that he should be a priority, you know, this um, this summer? So, yeah, let me know all, all of that in the comment section below. Um, I'm G. That is today's um, player watch, scout watch, if you want to call it that, done and dusted. And I am outie. <laughs>